I call to order the informal meeting of the plenary to mark the observance of the Nelson Mandela International Day. I would like to warmly welcome all of you to this meeting. As mentioned in my letter dated 9th June 2022, I've convened this informal meeting to observe the annual Nelson Mandela International Day, pursuant to General Assembly Resolution 64 slash 13 of 10th November 2009, by which the Assembly decided to designate 18th July as Nelson Mandela International Day to be observed each year beginning in 2010. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for joining the annual celebration of Nelson Mandela International Day, honoring the life and legacy of Mandeba Nelson Mandela. I would like to take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude to the government of South Africa, particularly Her, His Excellency Mondil Gungbele, Minister in the Presidency of South Africa, as well as Nelson Mandela Foundation for their support organizing today's event. I would also like to thank New York City Mayor Eric Adams and his office for organizing this afternoon's community service event. Giving back to our communities aligns with everything that Mandela stood for, and we appreciate this opportunity. In the same spirit, I welcome to the General Assembly Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and thank them for their consistent advocacy around public service. Allow me to recognize the incredible contributions of the 2020 Mandela Prize laureates. Mrs. Mariana Wardidoyan of Greece and His Excellency Morisanda Kuyate of Guinea. These esteemed individuals have chosen to live their lives in service to humanity as Madiba would have wanted and that is to be celebrated. My dear friends, we are gathered here not only to celebrate the memory of a man who devoted his entire life to the pursuit of equality and freedom for all, but to follow in his footsteps and honor his legacy by emulating his lifelong service to humanity. Today, we pay tribute to Madiba's legacy and recognizing how far our world has come since he began his life 140 years ago, remembering the innumerable battles fought and won in the name of justice and peace. Madiba's fight against apartheid was in fact a fight for a better world in which the freedom, justice, and dignity for, of all were respected. He called for peace, social justice, equality, and human understanding throughout his life. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, or his background, or his religion, Madiba said in his book, Long Walk to Freedom. He fought for the rightful dignity and equality of every person, and he advocated for engagement and solidarity across borders. In times of turmoil, Madiba's life teaches us to choose dignity over humiliation, to speak, of, to speak up during injustice, and to forgive rather than hate. He once said, to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Madiba's life is a testament that sustainable conflict resolution requires more than an end to violence, it depends on justice and compassion. This was amply reflected in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which was formed in South Africa to promote reconciliation and forgiveness among both the perpetrators and the victims of apartheid. The commission worked on the basis that in this human encounter of good and evil, the perpetrator's evil would be laid bare before the community and the dignity of the victim 
would prevail. My dear friends, Madiba's legacy as an outspoken and untiring advocate for democracy, freedom, and equality has been and continues to be an inspiration. He saw democracy as a system based on equality and respect for human dignity, a leadership based on humility, and a citizenry based on active participation. Madiba recognized early on in his presidency that no major political achievement is possible without gender equality. In 1994, at the opening of the first parliament, Madiba declared, freedom cannot be achieved unless women have been emancipated from all forms of oppression. Madiba was of the view that as long as women are bound by poverty and as long as they are looked down upon, human rights will lack substance. Overseeing the drafting of the South African Constitution, Madiba called for imprinting firm principles upholding the rights of women in the supreme law of the land, firm principles. It is indeed an ode to Madiba that today 46.5% of South African parliamentarians are women. My dear friends, Mandela believed that youth are the rock on which the future is built. He believed that children have a right to be whatever they want to be, and that they can achieve this only if they are given the space to dream and live out their dreams. He also believed that the youth can use the power of education to change the world. He called upon the youth of the world to be scriptwriters of their own destinies and feature themselves as stars that showed the way towards a brighter future. He founded Nelson Mandela Institute for Rural Development and Education in Eastern Cape to improve access to quality education in rural areas through teacher and leadership development, community mobilization, and through building strong and lasting public institutions. My dear friends, Madiba was also an environmentalist. His vision of the world was one where all people were able to live a fully dignified life with clean air to breathe and clean water to drink. At a personal level, he was also deeply connected to the earth. Commenting on the small patch of vegetable garden that he was allowed to grow in prison, Madiba said that the sense of being the custodian of this small patch of earth offered a small taste of freedom. The elders, a cross-cultural group of leaders that he had years later founded to forge human rights-based solutions to worldwide problems, had identified climate justice as one of its top priorities. At a time when we still fight in the COVID-19 pandemic, it is useful to recollect the fight against AIDS that Madiba had launched through his foundation. 4,664 initiative and the series of AIDS benefit concerts. My dear friends, from conflict to climate change, humanity is confronted with great challenges which, if left unanswered, could threaten the very planet we wish to leave to our children. At this very moment, we are witnessing a war and conflict unseen in generations, a continued global pandemic, global food security crisis, rising costs of living, and rampant inequality, and the ever-present danger of a climate crisis. Any one of these challenges is disconcerting. Taken together, it is likely a critical mass spreading anxiety, frustration, and despair. But my friends, this is not the time for despair. No matter the challenges and obstacles, we must persevere with conviction, with determination, and with hope. This is what Madiba would have wanted, what he himself fought for. Madiba once again remarked, even if the task seems impossible, do not give in to fatalism or despair. Otherwise, you will do nothing, and there will be no chance of positive social change. To fully honor him today, we must channel our perseverance. We must turn to each other for comfort. We must find solace in our peers, in our sisters and brothers across the globe. We must have faith in science, in innovation, in human solidarity. And we must believe that together we can overcome these challenges. Madiba said, Peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace is the creation of an environment 
where all can flourish, regardless of race, color, creed, religion, gender, class, caste, or any other social markers of difference. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we prepare for this afternoon's community service event, let us recall the wise words of Madiba. It is in your hands to make a better world for all who live it. Today and every day, let us come together and honor Madiba's memory in the spirit of his legacy through service for all of humanity. I thank you. We will now begin the presentation of Nelson Mandela Prize to the 2020 laureates, Ms. Mariana Wardinoya, Goodwill Ambassador of UNESCO and President of Elpida Hope Association of Friends of Children with Cancer, and His Excellency Morisanda Kuyate, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Guinea. Mrs. Mariana Wardi Noyan is participating virtually, live, through video teleconferencing. And I have been informed that the permanent representative of Greece to the United Nations, Her Excellency Maria Theophili, will receive the prize on her behalf. I now invite the Deputy Secretary General, Her Excellency Amina Mohammed, to join me in presenting the Nelson Rohilia Mandela Prize to the 2020 laureates. On behalf of the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, to the permanent representative of Greece, Her Excellency Maria Theophili, receiving it on behalf of Mrs. Mariana Vardinoyan, and to His Excellency Morisanda Cuyate, of uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Guinea. I thank the Deputy Secretary General for presenting the prizes to the laureates on behalf of the Secretary General. I congratulate Mrs. Mariana Wardion and His Excellency Morisanda Cuyate, the laureates of the United Nations 2020 Nelson Rohilia Mandela Prize. I now invite Mrs. Mariana Wardinoyan of Greece, Goodwill Ambassador of UNESCO, President of Elpida Hope Association of Friends of Children with Cancer, and Laureate of the United Nations 2020 Nelson Rohilia 
Mandela Prize to make a statement via video conferencing. Your Excellency, Mr. President of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency, Ms. Deputy Secretary General, Excellencies, in the challenging times you are living in, core values as peace, social justice, health, education, but also the gift of life itself, unfortunately, cannot be taken for granted. The fight for protecting human rights is more important than ever, and symbols who dedicate their lives in the protection of human rights, like Nelson Mandela did, became the shining light to guide our paths. This is the reason why it is a great honor for me to join my voice with the voice of the United Nations on this symbolic day in order to pay tribute to the life, work, and ideals of Nelson Mandela. I feel truly blessed that my action, life path, and beliefs brought me close to this legend. I humbly receive today this distinction that bears his name and carries all the values and ideals of his life. This is for me a great honor, but also a great commitment. I'm feeling deeply moved, and I would like to express my warmest thanks and gratitude to the United Nations for this immense honor, and also warmly congratulate Dr. Morisanda Kuyate. This highly disti significant distinction is a recognition for my fight against childhood cancer and my foundation's work for the defense of human rights in education and society. A true honor for me, but also for my home country, Greece, and the Greek people who have supported my work and humanitarian efforts. This award, this award belongs to the thousands of children that became our source of strength throughout our struggles against childhood cancer for more than 30 years. Children from Greece, Balkans, Mediterranean, Africa, and beyond are our everyday heroes and our pediatric oncology hospital in Athens, one of the most advanced hospitals in Europe, in our significant accomplishment towards our vision for a world without borders in children's health. In order to protect children's health, our hospital is always ready to respond to any international call for help, like we recently did for the children with cancer from Ukraine. Uh, the United Nations Development Goals, as well as UNESCO's priorities for education, peace, human rights, cultural heritage, and dialogue among civilizations are the cornerstones of our foundation for supporting vulnerable groups like as refugees and homeless people, and also for bringing human rights education in the Greek schools to provide students with non-blue examples and new opportunities. Uh, in my 35 years of action, I have always tried to pay service to humanity, to make a difference in other people's life, like Mandela in his wise words said. Nelson Mandela International Day 2022 is a great opportunity for the world to receive an ecumenical message for peace and international cooperation from the heart of the United Nations. Nelson Mandela's timeless legacy and the global theme of Nelson Mandela Day 2022 do what we can with what we have wherever we are, remind us that even through small acts of kindness, solidarity, and giving, 
standing by the weakest members of our society, we can all try to make our world a better place. Nelson Mandela changed the human history, changed the human mind and the lives of millions of people. Let the power of his soul, his visions, and his values guide our steps. We owe it to the memory of this great advocate for human rights, but we also owe it to our children, to our civilization, to our fellow humans, and to life itself. Thank you. I thank Mrs. Mariana Vardinoanis for her statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Morisanda Kuete, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Guinea and Laureate of the United Nations, Nelson Rolihala Mandela Prize to make a statement. Excellence, Monsieur Abdullah Shahid, Président de l'Assemblée Générale des Nations Unies, Excellence, Madame Amina Mohamed, Secrétaire Général Adjoint des Nations Unies, Excellence, Monsieur Mondli Bungubele, Ministre de la Présidence de la République de l'Afrique du Sud, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants des groupes régionaux, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les ambassadeurs, Monsieur Eric Adams, maire de la ville de New York, Prince Harry et Madame, duc de Sussex, chère Madame Mariana Vardino Yanis, honorables invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, permettez-moi tout d'abord d'exprimer à mon nom propre, au nom de ma famille et au nom de mon pays, la République de Guinée, ma profonde gratitude à l'Organisation des Nations Unies, notre organisation commune, pour m'avoir décerné le très prestigieux prix Nelson Mandela en 2020. Et aussi pour m'avoir invité ce 18 juillet 2022 à recevoir ce prix physiquement et à m'adresser au monde entier en ce jour de célébration de la journée internationale Nelson Mandela. Excellence, Monsieur le Président, honorables invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, mon aventure personnelle a commencé un soir de l'année 1983 à Touguet, dans une modeste préfecture de la Guinée. Jeune médecin, directeur d'hôpital, Très enthousiaste, j'ai reçu en urgence deux jumelles, Hassanatou et Houssenatou, âgés de 12 ans, qui venaient d'être excisés, mutilés, et qui, par la suite et par suite de saignements abondants, ont finalement perdu la vie, malgré la mobilisation de tout le personnel médical. Ma révolte. Et ma lutte contre les mutilations génitales féminines ont commencé là, car j'ai ressenti la mort de ces deux innocentes filles comme une perte de mes propres filles. C'est donc à ces jumelles qui sont parties trop tôt, à mes parents, surtout à ma mère, Hadia Saran Kondé, à ma merveilleuse famille qui m'accompagne, aux femmes de Kouroussa qui ont commencé la lutte avec moi, aux femmes de la Guinée, aux femmes d'Afrique et du monde que je dédie ce prix. Le 18 juillet est inscrit désormais en lettres de lumière dans l'histoire de l'humanité, car cette date célèbre une immense figure, un homme exceptionnel qui a mis le monde entier à l'école de la paix, à l'école de la tolérance et à l'école de l'amour de l'autre. Je veux nommer Nelson Rolilala Mandela. Je me souviens, quand j'étais jeune élève, dans ma ville Kouroussa, tous les samedis, nous faisions le tour de la ville en scandant « Libérez Mandela, libérez Mandela, libérez Mandela ». Aujourd'hui, c'est avec émotion que je porte le nom de ce prestigieux homme historique. Plus que jamais, nous avons besoin de Nelson Mandela, 
Nous avons besoin de l'esprit Mandela face à un monde, le nôtre, qui se fourvoie dans la tourmente et qui crée de nouvelles menaces contre sa propre existence. En effet, mesdames et messieurs, l'inégalité entre hommes et femmes, avec ses conséquences de violence à l'encontre des femmes et des filles, dont les mutilations génitales féminines et les mariages d'enfants, le fossé de plus en plus grand entre riches et pauvres, la destruction de la couche d'ozone avec ses conséquences dramatiques sur le climat, les guerres, le terrorisme, la faim, le manque d'eau continuent aujourd'hui d'ébranler notre planète. Nous pouvons juguler ces fléaux avec l'esprit Mandela. Cette année, nous célébrons cette journée sous le thème suivant. Fais ce que tu peux avec ce que tu as, où que tu sois. Mesdames et messieurs, aujourd'hui, ce que je peux, moi, en plus de la défense des droits des femmes et des enfants, c'est de participer avec toutes mes forces et avec conviction à travers ce prestigieux prix à la refondation de mon pays, la République de Guinée, qui se relève d'une grave blessure constitutionnelle. Ce que j'ai aujourd'hui, moi, c'est la responsabilité du ministère des Affaires étrangères, de la coopération internationale, de l'intégration africaine et des Guinéens de l'étranger que m'a confié son Excellence le colonel Mamadi Doumbouya, président de la transition, chef de l'État et chef suprême des armées de la République de Guinée. Excellence, Monsieur le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est avec l'esprit Mandela qu'en Guinée, le président a initié des assises nationales, un cadre de concertation et un dialogue inclusif dans lequel il a réclamé que les Guinéens se parlent et se pardonnent. C'est pourquoi, d'ici, de ce toit du monde, je lance un pressant appel à la responsabilité, à la compréhension et au discernement des organisations sous-régionales, régionales et internationales, et de tous les pays que vous représentez ici, envers la République de Guinée, dans son combat contre la corruption, dans son combat pour la justice et la refondation de l'État, après une grave violation de ses lois qui a abouti au changement salutaire du 5 septembre 2021. Important contributeur dans les forces de maintien de la paix des Nations Unies, depuis plusieurs années et dans plusieurs pays où des soldats guinéens ont laissé leur vie, et je m'incline devant leur mémoire, pionnière dans la lutte pour la décolonisation et l'indépendance de l'Afrique, membre actif et leader du panafricanisme, mon pays, la République de Guinée, mérite respect et soutien, surtout à une période de son histoire où elle en a tant besoin. Nelson, Rolilala, Mandela, Madiba, fier de porter ton nom, je ne ferai peut-être jamais autant que toi, mais j'essaierai de toute ma vie de toutes mes forces de timidité, Mandela. Vive la coopération internationale, vive les Nations Unies, je vous remercie. I thank Dr. Morrison Dakoyate for his statement. I now give the floor to the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Her Excellency Amina Mohammed, to make a statement on behalf of the Secretary General. Excellencies, the 2020 Prize Laureates, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really pleased to be with you today and to represent the Secretary General and deliver his remarks on his behalf as we celebrate Nelson Mandela International Day. And his message is, today the world honors a giant of our time, a leader of unparalleled courage and towering achievement and a man of quiet dignity and deep humanity. Nelson Mandela was a healer of communities and a mentor to generations. He remains a moral compass and a reference to us all. Madiba walked the path to freedom and dignity with steely determination and with compassion and love. He showed that each and every one of us has the ability 
and responsibility to build a better future for all. Our world today is marred by war, overwhelmed by emergencies, blighted by racism, discrimination, poverty and inequalities, and threatened by climate disaster. Let us find hope in Nelson Mandela's example and inspiration in his vision. Today and every day, let us honor Nelson Mandela's legacy by taking action, by speaking out against hate and standing up for human rights, by embracing our common humanity, rich in diversity, equal in dignity, united in solidarity, and by together making our world more just, compassionate, prosperous, and sustainable for all. Excellencies, this was the message of the Secretary General. Dear friends, what an amazing feeling it is after virtual commemorations over the past two years that we can be together in person to pay tribute in this august General Assembly Hall, the very place Madiba spoke to us after his long walk to freedom. On a personal note, Madiba has been an inspiration for me ever since I was a young child in Nigeria trying to find my path. Since then, Mama Grasa and Selo Hatang, through the Nelson Mandela Foundation, keep the fire under our feet on the many issues that Nelson Mandela Madiba embodied. I've taken to heart his profound lesson that we all have the ability and responsibility to take action, that there is no us and them. We are in this together, carrying a shared responsibility to, prefer to preserve our common home and stand in solidarity with one another. All over the world, there are people who follow in Madiba's footsteps with that same stubborn optimism that defined him. I would like to acknowledge two of those such people today that we were able and honored to give the laureates of the 2020 Nelson Mandela Prize. Miss Mariana Vardinoyanis of Greece and her decades-long fight against childhood cancer and Dr. Morisana Koyati of Guinea for his quest to end female genital mutil mutilation. COVID restrictions have not allowed one of our, uh, one of our colleagues to, to travel to New York, but we're really pleased to hear the statement of Morisana Koyati today, and we congratulate you both. The Nelson Mandela Prize is guided by the purpose and principles of our United Nations and the promise of the ideals that were championed by Madiba. We work towards his vision of peace, dignity, equality on a healthy planet, every day, everywhere, ensuring that we leave no one behind. Our SDG advocate, representing persons with disabilities, or I would like to say special abilities, uh, is from South Africa. And Eddie Ndopu, we welcome you into these halls today as you continue to inspire us. Our best tribute to Madiba is to realize the promise of the Sustainable Development Goals, to stand in solidarity against hate, and to work for peace and prosperity and human rights for all on Mandela Day and every day. In Madiba's wise words, it only seems impossible until it is done. Thank you for your attention. I thank the Deputy Secretary General for her statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mondil Gungbele, Minister in the Presidency of the Republic of South Africa, to make a statement. Your Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, President of the General Assembly, Your Excellency, Mr. Mena J. Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, the Duke and the Duchess of Success, Prince Harry, and Ms. Meghan Markle, the United Nations Nelson Mandela Prize to the 2020 laureates, His Excellency, Dr. Mursand Kuyate, and also Minister of Foreign Affairs of Guinea, and Ms. Mariana Vadionis of Greece. Mr. Eric Adams, the Mayor of New York, distinguished excellencies, dear colleagues and friends, 
It is a matter of great privilege for me to address this august gathering on behalf of the Government of Republic of South Africa and His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa to mark the Nelson Mandela International Day in honor of the lifelong work of our late beloved global icon and first president of our Democratic Republic, Nelson Kholisatlan Mandela, who was also born on this historic day. The South African government shall never take for granted the landmark decision of the United Nations taken in November 2009 to officially declare 18th of July as, an, as a Mandela Day. Mr. President, the chosen theme for this year's Mandela Day as issued by the Nelson Mandela Foundation is about creating awareness of interactions between food security and climate change. Crucially, the selected tagline for this year's edition is do what you can with what you have wherever you are. The lifelong work of Nelson Mandela in service of justice causes for the benefit of humanity is a testament that everyone can play their role for the greater good with what they have in their respective societies and communities. Nelson Mandela dedicated 67 years of the best years of his life to the service of others, albeit in very difficult conditions, including 27 years of imprisonment. The unprecedented global challenges currently confronting humanity and the planet we share require that the international community acts in harmony through solidarity and common purpose. As we grapple with peace and security challenges, human right atrocities, climate disaster, COVID-19 recovery, addressing food security and hunger, bridging the economic and gender inequality, as well as combating the stubborn demon of racial intolerance and discrimination, we can derive courage from the power of example displayed by our beloved Madiba that we can make the impossible to be possible even though the odds may seem stake, stacked against us. Mr. President, in Swahili proverb teaches us that a boat doesn't go forward if each one is rowing their way. This marks eight years before 2030, which is our agreed target for achieving the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. As we seek to restore momentum disrupted by the outbreak of COVID-19, it goes without saying that if we're now in different directions, we would only move around in circles and not reach our intended destination on time. To assess the weight of the Herculean task before us regarding the implementation of SDGs, I wish to isolate those SDGs that talk to the theme of this year's Mandela, namely goal two, on ending hunger, achieving food security, and improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture, and goal 13, on taking urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. On goal two, the number of people going hungry is on the rise, a situation exacerbated by skyrocketing food prices, even for the most basic goods, such as sugar, vegetable oils, dairy products, wheat, and cereals. They, the byproduct of this crisis has been outbreaks of civil unrest, conflict over scarce resources, and widespread malnutrition among children. Let us use our collective wisdom as the international community to address objectively these food security challenges. We note the efforts of the United Nations in this regard. Our goal 13, the consequences of climate disaster, are no longer in the confines of scientific academic journals, but are now a lived reality. The extreme weather condition characterized by rising sea levels, increased heat waves, droughts, and flood caused by climate change are devastating our planet and impact on livelihoods of people all over the world, particularly the poor. For the sake of the future generation, we urgently need to adhere to our great international commitments to guarantee food security as well as ensure that we limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. This we can achieve if we all row 
in the same direction as the wisdom in the Swahili proverb urges us to do if we want meaningful results. We will not be able to achieve our noble objectives without peace in the world. Nelson Mandela would have urged the international community during this period to invest more in diplomacy, mediation, and peaceful resolution of all conflicts. He would have abhorred any attempts to prolong instead of stopping conflict. It is disheartening to know that, as the United Nations General Secretary has reminded us, the world to date faces more violent conflicts than at any period in the past seven decades, and two billion people live in conflict-ridden areas. Mr. President, as I conclude, I wish to remind this august gathering that Nelson Mandela's life was synonymous with painful struggle but never relented in the face of adversity. Rather, he understood that making the world a better place than you had found it was very noble and gratifying endeavor. Most importantly, Nelson Mandela accepted that committing yourself to struggle was a lifelong obligation when he said, I quote, after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I thank you. I thank the Minister in the Presidency of the Republic of South Africa for his statement. I now give the floor to Mr. Eric Adams, Mayor of the City of New York, to make a statement. Thank you, Mr. President, Deputy Secretary General, Under Secretary General, Excellencies, and honored guests. Today we celebrate the life and legacy of Nelson Mandela. I also want to congratulate the Nelson Mandela Prize laureates. This day is so important because today many people around the globe are in dark places. They don't see a future for themselves, their families, or our planet. They're serving a life sentence of despair and hopelessness. I have been to the Robben Island prison where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 27 years. That small cell where he endured so much was a powerful sight. While he was in jail, he knew that where he was, was not who he was. And Nelson Mandela went on to become the president of the country that imprisoned him. As he himself once said, to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. The freedom of others is what we must address now the freedom to live a long and healthy life on this green and glorious earth, the freedom to see all the world's children and grandchildren flourish as well as generations to come, the freedom from wars, conquests, and brutal inequality, the freedom from the racism and bigotry in which so many of these crimes are committed, the freedom to live, work, and love in our own way according to our own choice. Freedom from want and freedom from fear. This world, a world that celebrates the human spirit instead of crushing it in the name of power and impossible. But no leader, however gifted or inspiring, can change the world alone. The people must be mobilized and political institutions must respond. We as leaders cannot fall back on excuses and inertia when the people demand change. We must be inspired by the courage of Nelson Mandela or Madiba, his given name. History cannot erase the 27 years he sacrificed in the name of freedom. But his example reminds us that the darkest times cannot quench our spirit or dim our hopes. My mother once said to me, 
If you find yourself in a dark place, you make the determination if this dark place is a burial or a planting. These dark times can and must be a planting. The ongoing crises of COVID, war, and crime have imprisoned us in our own Robben Island prisons. But these are temporary conditions. They're not life sentences. My own personal story is a reflection of that. I was dyslexic and denied support services as a child. I was arrested as a youth and felt rejected as a person. But I knew it was not the end, not a burial. And today I stand before you energized for all that I have endured on my journey too. Each of us must challenge the humanistic spirit of fortitude and forgiveness as we rise through the challenges of our time. That Mandela-like energy will allow us to turn our pain into purpose. It will allow us to turn those dark places into the plantings we need to assure a harvest of hope, equity, and peace. This planting means ending global poverty through sharing our worldwide wealth. It means giving Mother Earth the love she deserves by protecting our environment. It means affluent countries must share vaccines for all to help the spread of COVID-19. It means ending abuses against women and children across the globe. These tasks will not be easy. This is something we must focus on. The path is not straight. Victory is not assured. But hidden in the shadows of Medela's story is our pathway for it. We must be courageous enough to examine the directions we are going and commit to doing the right thing. We must say to those who believe where they are is who they are, that they are all right, things can change. And that change cannot wait. You are husbands, wives, children, and members of this great race we call the human race. The work of planting must begin now with us. We must make sure the harvest feeds the hopes and dreams of all in the years to come. And New York City is ready to work with the world to make this future a reality. Long live the spirit of Madiba. Thank you. I thank the mayor of the city of New York for his statement. I now invite Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, who will deliver a keynote statement. And thank you to the President of the General Assembly, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Abdullah Shaheed, for the introduction. And thank you to the Nelson Mandela Foundation for inviting me to speak on this day of all days. And thank you to Secretary General Guterres and the United Nations, whose promise reflects Mandela's vision of a freer, more peaceful world, for hosting us today. It is an honor to join you all on Nelson Mandela International Day. Having spent time with many of Mandela's family members over the years, I speak to you today with humility, mindful of how much the man they loved means to so many. Those of us not fortunate enough to know Mandela well have come to understand the man through his legacy, the letters he wrote alone in his prison cell the speeches he delivered to his people, and those incredible shirts that he sported. We've also come to know him through the photographs of a person who, even when confronting unimaginable cruelty and injustice, almost always had a smile on his face. For me, for me, there's one photo in particular that stands out. On my wall, 
and in my heart every day is an image of my mother and Mandela meeting in Cape Town in 1997. The photo was presented to me by the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, whose friendship and inspiration were their own treasured gift. My wife and I had the honor of introducing our four-month-old son to him back in 2019. But when I first looked at the photo, straight away what jumped out was the joy on my mother's face, the playfulness, cheekiness even, the pure delight to be in communion with another soul so committed to serving humanity. And then I looked at Mandela. Here was a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders, asked to heal his country from the wreckage of its past and transform it for the future. A man who had endured the very worst of humanity, vicious racism and state-sponsored brutality. A man who had lost 27 years with his children and family that he would never get back. 27 years. Yet in that photo and so many others, he is still beaming, still able to see the goodness in humanity, still buoyant with a beautiful spirit that lifted everyone around him. Not because he was blind to the ugliness, the injustices of the world, no, he saw them clearly. He had lived them, but because he knew we could overcome them. In our own time, a time of global uncertainty and division, when it's all too easy to look around and feel anger or despair, I've been inspired to go back to Mandela's writings for insight into how this could be, how he could experience so much darkness and always manage to find the light. There I found a few lines that stopped me in my tracks. In a letter from prison, he wrote, I feel my heart pumping hope steadily to every part of my body, warming my blood and pepping up my spirits. I am convinced that floods of personal disaster can never drown a determined rev revolutionary. To a freedom fighter, hope is what a life belt is to a swimmer, a guarantee that one will keep afloat and free from danger. It moved me even more when I saw the date, August 1st, 1970, seven years into Mandela's imprisonment, not even one third of the way through. In those circumstances, how many of us would have lost hope and let our life belts slip away? How many of us would have been broken by a system designed to do exactly that? And let's be honest, how many of us are in danger of losing those life belts right now? How many of us feel battered, helpless, in the face of the seemingly endless stream of disasters and devastation? I understand. This has been a painful year in a painful decade. We're living through a pandemic that continues to ravage communities in every corner of the globe. Climate change wreaking havoc on our planet, with the most vulnerable suffering most of all. The few weaponizing lies and disinformation at the expense of the many. And from the horrific war in Ukraine to the rolling back of constitutional rights here in the United States, we are witnessing a global assault on democracy and freedom, the cause of Mandela's life. According to Freedom House, our world has grown less free every year for more than a decade and a half. As so, as so often happens in history, the consequences of decisions made by most, some of the most powerful people in some of the wealthiest countries are being felt even more deeply across the continent of Africa. The pandemic, the war, and inflation have left Africa mired in a fuel and food crisis the likes of which we have not seen in decades. Worse still, this comes at a time when the Horn of Africa is enduring the longest drought it's faced in close to half a century. 
and what is happening in Africa is not an isolated event. The drought there is a reflection of extreme weather we are seeing across the globe. As we sit here today, our world is on fire, again. And these historic weather events are no longer historic. More and more, they are part of our daily lives. And this crisis will only grow worse, unless our leaders lead. Unless the countries represented by the seats in this hallowed hall make the decisions, the daring, transformative decisions that our world needs to save humanity. These decisions may not fit with the agendas of every political party. They may invite resistance from powerful interests. But the right thing to do is not up for debate. And neither is the science. The only question is whether we will be brave enough and wise enough to do what is necessary. So yes, this is a pivotal moment. A moment where multiple converging crises have given way to an endless string of injustices. A moment where ordinary people around the world are experiencing extraordinary pain. And in this moment, we have a choice to make. We can grow apathetic, succumb to anger, or yield to despair, surrendering to the gravity of what we're up against. Or we can do what Mandela did every single day inside that seven by nine foot prison cell on Robben Island and every day outside of it too. We can find meaning and purpose in the struggle. We can wear our principles as armor. Heed the advice Mandela once gave his son to never give up the battle even in the darkest hour and find hope where we have the courage to seek it. Since I first visited Africa at 13 years old, I've always found hope on the continent. In fact, for most of my life, it has been my lifeline, a place where I've found peace and healing time and time again. It's where I felt closest to my mother and sought solace after she died, and where I knew I had found a soulmate in my wife. And it's where so much of my work is, is why my work is based there. Because despite continued hardship, there are people across Africa who embody Mandela's spirit and ideals, building on the progress he helped make possible. I see it in the communities fighting to save the Okavango Delta, defying the odds to protect their home and its biodiversity from big oil companies. I see it in the young girls who were forced out of school and into marriage in northern Nigeria speaking out today so others may get a fuller chance to thrive tomorrow. I see it in the young entrepreneurs I met in Johannesburg using their energy and creativity to launch businesses that serve their communities. I see it in World Central Kitchen, a partner of the Archwell Foundation and their volunteers in Ukraine and around the world fighting food insecurity one meal at a time. I see it in the vulnerable children of Lesotho and Botswana, orphaned by HIV, striving for a better future, which we support through our organization, Center Bali. I see it in the newest generation of activists for equality and justice, who are mobilizing people of all ages and races, all faiths and walks of life, to lace up their shoes and join the march. And I see it in the parents I meet around the world. As determined as Mandela was to give their children a better shot at a brighter future. To prioritize their own and their children's mental health and well-being. To reject old ideas and past prejudices. To heal from the past and build resilience for the present and future. Because they know the price of inaction will be paid by the next generation. In their strength and in their deeds, Mandela's legacy shines as brightly as ever. They are my life belt. I hope they can be yours too. Because right now, the water is rising all around us. 
in some places, quite literally. So it's more important than ever that we seek a purpose greater than ourselves and get to work. After all, Mandela was not only a man of conscience, he was a man of action. He organized millions, inspired billions, joined hands not only with those who loved him, but those who had once jailed him to build a better future for all. What Mandela understood was that true legacy transcends one's own needs and the passage of time. It defies the moment. Its relevance never ceases. Legacy does not belong to the self. It belongs to those it impacts. That doesn't mean he was perfect. No, he was something better. He was human. As he wrote in his autobiography, I have made missteps along the way, but I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come. But I can rest only for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibilities, and I dare not linger, for my long walk is not yet ended. It has been almost a decade now since Mandela's own walk on this earth finally reached its end. But what he taught us again and again is that it was never his walk alone. It was all of ours. It is all of ours. And what a beautiful gift, especially as a dad of two young children myself, the message that this world is meant to be shared, that the work of each generation is tied to those who came before and those who will come after us. That we have an obligation to give as much, if not more, than we take. And never shudder in the face of darkness, for hope is the fuel that courage requires. So on this Nelson Mandela International Day, as a new generation comes of age, a generation that did not witness Mandela's leadership for themselves, let's commit to remembering and celebrating his life and legacy every day, not just once a year. Let's talk with our children about what he stood for. Let's seek out what we have in common, empower all people to reclaim our democracies and harness the light of Mandela's memory to illuminate the way forward. Because if we can summon our own courage, just as he did, if we can see one another's humanity just as he did, a better day will truly be on the horizon. Thank you. I thank the Duke of Sussex for his statement. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Morocco who will speak on behalf of the African states. Mr. President, Madam DSG, Mr. Ministers, Dukes of Sussex, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the African group as we gather today to observe Nelson Mandela International Day. But at the outset, I would like to warmly congratulate the two laureates of Mandela, Nelson Mandela Prizes, Madam Mariana Vardinuyanis and His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Guinea, Marisoda Koyate. The African group, Commander Resolution 6413 of the General Assembly to honor President Mandela every 18th of July. 
and uh, to recognize the enormous contribution he made to human rights, democracy, justice, and equality. Mandela Day is not just a celebration of his legacy, but a movement to honor his life's work by making change for the better. In his life and his legacy, Mr. Mandela has advocated for the inherent dignity and equality of people, both within and between nations, regardless of race, nationality, or belief. He dedicated his life to the service of humanity by defending human rights, gender equality, tolerance, coexistence, living together, and fighting against racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and related and tolerance. Today, we celebrate this ideals and his vision, and we call to promote them. On September 2018, world leaders gathered here at the United Nations headquarters for the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit. They adopted a political declaration committed to redoubling efforts to build a just, peaceful, prosperous, inclusive, and fair world. As they pay tribute to Nelson Mandela's qualities and service to humanity, they also recognize the period from 2019 to 2028 as the Nelson Mandela Decade of Peace. As we celebrate today his legacy, and remember the ideals he lived for. We wish to salute Mr. Mandela for his leadership, personal integrity, humility, forgiveness, and compassion. Acknowledging as well his contribution to the struggle for democracy, human rights, promotion of culture of peace throughout the world. In this regard, we wish to extend the greetings of the African group to the government and people of South Africa and all peace-loving nations around the world, which had to overcome centuries of racial subjugation and continue to strive for a world of peace and quality defined by solidarity rather than differences. South Africa becoming, therefore, a model not of only for Africa, but for the whole world. The values of solidarity, humanity, reconciliation, and service to the ordinary people that Nelson Mandela practiced and contributed to throughout his life are the very foundation of the shared values of our African continent. The Mandela spirit has inspired the African leaders for the adoption of the 2063 Agenda of the African Union. The future we want for Africa, enshrined in this agenda, seeks to learn from the lessons of the past, build on the progress now underway, and strategically explore all possible opportunities available to ensure positive socioeconomic transformation. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development also commits us to leaving no one behind. The implementation of these agendas require a collective effort by all of us as it, they have been inspired by spirit of the fight of Mr. Nelson Mandela. Therefore, the African group calls on all leaders around the world to be guided by Madiba's dream for a non-racial, peaceful world where all people have equal opportunities to build a common and prosperous future for all, despite our diversity and differences of race, color, religion, belief, and level of development. The message behind 
Nelson Mandela International Day is simple. Each individual, and as it has been just said by Prince Duke of Wessex, every day, not only one day a year, every day, everybody, every individual has the ability and the responsibility to change the world for the better. Nelson Mandela himself said, and they quote, it is in your hands to make a better world for all who live in it, end of quote. The life as well as the legacy of Mr. Mandela are universal and timeless message for the humanity, our humanity. Therefore, let us work hand in hand, closely, together, with the aim to make Mandela's dream a reality. I thank you very much. I thank the distinguished representative of Morocco. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Palau, who will speak on behalf of the Asia-Pacific states. Mr. President, Ms. Deputy Secretary General, Excellencies, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and distinguished delegates. At the outset, thank you, Mr. President, for convening this informal meeting to observe the annual Nelson Mandela International Day. I have the great honor and privilege to deliver this statement on behalf of the Asia Pacific Group. Colleagues, today, we gather to pay tribute to a legendary individual. President Mandela was driven by an unshakable belief in the equity and equality of all people and his determination to overthrow the system of apartheid in South Africa. Despite serving 27 years in prison, he went on to become South Africa's first democratically elected president. His legacy is one of persistence and of hope and of the strength and resilience of the human spirit. Today, we come together to honor his work and reflect on the lessons of his life that one person through humility, forgiveness, compassion, and the promotion of peace can change the world for the better. While his struggle was particular to South Africa at its onset, it came to embody the universal aspirations of people around the world, their hopes for a better life, and the possibility of moral transformation in human relationships. Through sacrifice, unwavering leadership, and perhaps most of all, through moral example, President Mandela demonstrated that it is possible to heal divisions through a firm commitment to equity, peaceful dialogue, and the respect for the rule of law. What Nelson Mandela fought for is as relevant today as it was then. Today, societies are becoming more polarized. Hate speech and misinformation are confusing the truth, questioning science, and undermining democratic institutions. Widening inequality, political unrest, Natural disasters and climate change coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic has rolled back gains in the global fight against poverty. It is more crucial than ever for us to work together in solidarity to overcome current and emerging challenges. Mr. President, it was in service of this long walk to freedom, justice, and equality that Nelson Mandela devoted his life. Um, as reiterate, to reiterate uh, the quote Madiba once said, it is in your hands to make a better world for all who live in it. Let us continue to build on his legacy and renew our commitment to multilateralism, the UN Charter, international law, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Palau. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of St. Lucia, who will speak on behalf of the Latin American and Caribbean states. Mr. President, Deputy Secretary General, Excellencies, Honored Guests, 
I have the honor to speak on behalf of the group of Latin American and Caribbean states as we commemorate Nelson Mandela International Day. As we honor this consummate world leader who epitomized wisdom, strength, determination, and inspiration, we can also evaluate our own service to humanity as we walk in his tall shadow. As the international community seeks solutions to the many challenges we face, Mandela's principled leadership at the national, regional, and indeed global levels continue to inspire us all. Despite his global profile, he remained grounded in the imperatives of daily existence and the pursuit of betterment for all. He expressed frequently and forcefully, especially in his writings. These immortal words serve as a poignant reminder that the decisions we take, sometimes all too casually, have far-reaching implications in the lives of others and indeed our entire planet. In that light, Mandela, if he were here, might well ask of us all, why have we not yet built a world in which we can all live to our fullest potential? He posed such a question in this very hall. Let us use the lessons taught by Madiba as inspiration, the ideals of freedom, human dignity, and equality for all embedded in Mandela's legacy are of vital importance for the work of the United Nations in the common endeavor of building a better world. We recognize the global influence of Nelson Mandela and his active contribution to the promotion of multilateralism and peace, the value of tolerance, dialogue, and mutual understanding, the end of foreign occupation, and the right to self-determination the vital role of development, international cooperation and solidarity, the fight against racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia, and all forms of related intolerance, gender equality, the empowerment of women, and the rights of children, among many others. We reaffirm our commitment to uphold the political declaration adopted at the Nelson Mandela Summit in 2018 and to observe the period 2019 to 2028 as the Nelson Mandela Decade of Peace. Mr. President, as we look to our own agenda, Mandela's inspiration can be reoccurring motivation if we would only recall the fundamental principles which anchored his life and service, he offers us a world of wisdom. For our part, we hail from a region designated as a zone of peace. We believe a peaceful society is indispensable for all to thrive. We are and must be the architects of peace. We must all play our part. Mr. President, on Nelson Mandela International Day, we are inspired by his example. We reaffirm the purposes and principles of the Charter and the irreplaceable role of the United Nations to tackle present and future global challenges. On this day, we pay homage and express our appreciation for the life of a true global leader, global citizen, who to this day continues to inspire us all. He was a true statesman who embodied democratic ideals for freedom, equality, peace, social justice, integrity, and reconciliation. Let us continue to draw from the lessons of his life in service to humanity. All that he fought for, all that he stood for, remains very much relevant today, particularly in our work here at the United Nations. Collectively, we must believe that we can build better societies 
for each of us is charged with the responsibility of making a difference in this world. The legacy of Nelson Mandela will continue to inspire generations across this globe, knowing that it is important to do what we can with what we have where we are. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of St. Lucia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Finland who will speak on behalf of the Western European and other states. Mr. President, Madam Deputy Secretary General, Honorable Ministers, Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the Western European and other states group on the occasion of the Nelson Mandela International Day. The purpose of this day is to honor Mr. Mandela's life and legacy with the aim to change the world for the better. This year's theme for the International Day is do what you can with what you have wherever you are. This is reflective of, on the work of the United Nations, which has a wide presence globally, working across all its three pillars, from peace and security to human rights and development. Nelson Mandela taught us the importance of working together to improve the lives of all. He taught us to stop spread, spreading hate and instead spread understanding and tolerance. Working through the United Nations, we have the opportunity and the ability to unify the peoples and governments of the world on this goal for humanity. We as nations who are united, together with all other stakeholders and individuals, have the tools to drive positive change in the world. In practical terms, every one of us can make a difference. Sometimes it means stepping into someone else's shoes, Sometimes it means standing up for yourself or for someone else against injustices. For countries, it also means promoting human rights, working on peace mediation, and providing education, among other things. Excellencies, our collective vision for the world in 2030 has been set out in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Significant progress on these goals cannot be achieved without addressing the structural and systemic impediments to their fulfillment. Climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic, cybercrime, terrorism, conflicts, humanitarian crises, and other global disasters affect us all. Our collective action is needed. No country is able to address these challenges alone. Mr. Mandela's work and extensive contribution on promotion of freedom, justice, democracy, human rights, gender and racial equality, as well as conflict prevention and reconciliation, continue to inspire us to work towards sustainable and resilient societies where everyone is included and can live a life in dignity and peace. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the fragilities and structural inequalities in our social, economic, and regulatory systems. It has affected, affected the lives of millions around the world. The destructive impact of the pandemic has exposed exti exti existing disparities and damaged vulnerable communities in multiple ways. Our response and action in the aftermath of the pan pandemic much, must be inclusive so that no one is left behind. Here again, our common efforts, international cooperation plays an essential role. The further along we are in implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the better we can respond to varying challenges ahead of us in the future. Furthermore, we need partners in order to leave no one behind. The United Nations provides a unique platform to form global partnerships between different actors and stakeholders, member states, UN system, civil society, national human rights institutions, 
private sector, scientific institutions and academia all have a role to play and cooperation amongst these actors should take place on all levels of societies. Together we are stronger. Dear friends, I will finish with the words of Nelson Mandela. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others." End of quote. In celebration of Mr. Mandela's legacy, let's honor his work by committing to these words and strive to make a positive impact on people's everyday life around the world. I wish everyone a happy Nelson Mandela Day. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Finland. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the host country, the United States. Thank you, Mr. President, Excellencies, honored guests. The United States is honored to help celebrate the life and enduring legacy of Nelson Mandela. His impact in this country has been profound, has spanned generations, and has served as a guidepost for action. Today's complicated world demands that we take forward President Mandela's vision with the same commitment and energy that he exhibited during his life, because racism, inequality, and injustice are a threat to us all. Congratulations to today's laureates of the Nelson Mandela Prize and the vision you've shown in advancing his example. Thank you so much for inspiring us. In May 2005, at Amherst College, President Mandela stated, we are all threatened by entrenched inequality and divisions. We all must prove equal to a better possibility. In the United States, we still have our work to do, but we've taken up this call both at home and abroad. On his first day in office, President Biden signed an executive order directing a government-wide effort to develop targeted plans to advance equity. In April of this year, more than 90 federal agencies released their first ever equity action plans, laying out strategies and commitments to address systemic barriers to equity in the United States. The United States has recently appointed its first special representative for racial equity and justice to advance the rights of persons belonging to marginalized communities and to combat systemic racism, discrimination, and xenophobia around the world. Last October, President Biden established the White House Gender Policy Council to ensure that gender equity and equality are at the forefront of America's domestic and foreign policy. And the United States works vigorously to support the robust engagement of civil society on issues related to equity, justice, accessibility, and inclusivity. Despite our promising efforts, there's more to do. We must comprehensively tackle the complex challenges of this moment, including the impacts of COVID-19, climate change, food insecurity, health disparities, emerging technologies, and economic dislocation on marginalized populations and those left behind. We must also work to restore trust in global institutions, strengthen democracy worldwide, and accelerate our work to combat racism, inequality, and all forms of intolerance. And we must do this with great urgency. As Nelson Mandela stated, our ideals and compassion must be matched by our actions. By unifying our efforts and centering equity and justice in our global affairs, we can do what we can with what we have, wherever we are, in pursuit of a more just and equal world. Thank you very much. I thank the distinguished representative of the United States. Before concluding, and as announced in my letter dated 12th July, I would like to invite members to participate in the traditional Nelson Mandela International Day Public Service Activity, which will take place from 1 to 3.30 p.m. today in the Thomas Jefferson Park in East Harlem. The informal meeting of the plenary on the observance of the annual Nelson Mandela International Day is now concluded. The meeting is adjourned.